Most people in life are looking for how to make a life worth living and return with having. When a man is in love, he has hope in his soul. When a man has someone to love, he is better in the world. When a man is truly in love, he never does a thing to harm anyone. He is always concerned with, how can I be a better man so that she will choose me over everyone else? I know that feeling, because when I lived in Japan, I had to make that move. I had to accept that a girl liked me, but I wasn't expecting to like me. I had to accept that I was appropriate for that person. I had to accept that she was ready for me before I might have been ready for her, but it turned out to be a marvelous relationship for a very long time. We produced a son, we produced a wife in two countries, and that's okay. It's my lifeline that I'm looking for now, because my wife of many years is gone. My son of many years of responsibility is now older, and openly, I'm a grandfather. I don't have to explain how that works. Most people understand the birds and the bees. Most people understand that God is almost always pleased when a child of the Lord's house, regardless of what nation they come from, is well loved, so that they know without a shadow of a doubt who loves them is their parents and God. In the world of men, there's many types of men. There are tall men, there are short men, there are big men, there are fat men, there are skinny and scrawny men, there are emaciated men who don't know how to love themselves. But a man who loves himself cares about other people. A man who loves himself does nothing to harm someone's life in any way, shape, or form. A man who loves himself and loves his children does not interfere with other people's lives, especially the lives of strangers. And a man who loves God never, ever does anything to sexually, appropriately interfere with someone's life. Now that phrase was very odd for me to say, but what I mean is that there are people who think they have rights to someone's sexuality, and that is a lie they tell themselves. At no time does the Bible, and particularly the chapters on making love, talk about that. At no time does Jesus Christ say, tell me about your sexuality, because he pegs the whores on that. At no time did Jesus say to man, you have the right to judge the quick and the dead, I will do that. And at no time did Jesus say to women that you have the right to sexually assault someone in the night. At no time did he give any pastor the right to humiliate someone who is not his wife. And even then, he has no right to humiliate his wife. In the world of God, there is righteousness, and then there is rightfulness. Righteousness is what pastors often preach about Jesus, the Lord's house, the heavenly ghost. But what's amazing to me is when I try to show people the Holy Ghost, they freak out and don't think it's of God. There is no satanic force that has the ability to create anything holy. We have learned that all things are holy from the Bible. We have learned that all things God makes are holy. We have studied this in many forms across the world, that there are many countries that have different versions of God, different practices, and different rituals, different ceremonies to produce the men and the women who live in this world. There is no person of the earth today that God considers unworthy of his love, and there is no human being that has the right to lord over anyone with any vehicle, any job, any practice, anything at all.